Hi, Bwan. Bonakam. Salam. Tim and talk about the vaccine situation across the world, especially how it relates to America. But I'm not going to talk about it in terms of geopolitics or economics. I'm going to talk about it in terms of mafianomics. I think this actually makes the most sense as a street thing. So let's talk about the mafia. So I watch a lot of mafia movies, so I'm going to reference those throughout. So let's start with the first thing you need to do if you're going to do a drug trade or any sort of like money making business like this. And let's go back to Godfather, where Solozzo is talking to the Godfather, Vito Corleone. And he says he wants to get into the drug trade. So what he says is, what I want is those politicians you carry around in your pocket, like so many nickels and dimes. And that's exactly what the drug companies and the whole healthcare industry in America has. They have politicians and bureaucrats and officials in their pocket. The most obvious case in point is just their healthcare industry. In other places, this isn't really an industry like that. We just have public healthcare. But in America, the whole thing is captured and all of the officials are paid off. So let's just look at how the Biden administration is paid off. So Joe Biden here is getting $372,000 from Pfizer, $350,000 from Johnson, $125,000 from Gilead. These are all the vaccine manufacturers, pharmaceutical companies. These are campaign donations. So Americans are quite of, proud of disclosing everything and pretending they're not corrupt, but this is also corruption. Like, you just disclose it. Like, if someone has a $10,000 paid dinner or, you know, gets paid a million dollars speaking fees like Janet Yellen does, that is corruption. It's just white people sort of launder it in their own fucking minds uh, by calling it these things. But, you know, if you think about it in terms of an African or a Russian person doing it, and, you know, that's where you are, corrupt. So. Joe Biden, his consigliere, this is Joe the boss, his consigliere is Anita Dunn. So Anita Dunn's one of his senior advisors. So in addition to working for Joe Biden, she has a PR company. And in that PR company, they represent Pfizer. And like, she's still like an owner of that company. And you know, Pfizer is still kind of her bread and butter. And the thing to remember throughout all this is that like these companies will be paying these people much more than the US taxpayer will. So this is who they work for. So now let's go down to the capo regime, the captains. So Susan Rice, who's a domestic advisor to Joe Biden, uh, I think she has, she's disclosed under 5 million in Johnson & Johnson stock, under 50,000 in Pfizer. Eric Lander, who's a science advisor, he has, he's disclosed uh, under $1 million in BioNTech, which is the smaller company that Pfizer distributed. Then Anthony Blinken, who's the Secretary of State, has consulted for Gilead, and he's set up like his own consulting company, like he's like co completely corrupt. Um, Chiquita brooks Lashore from Medicare Medicaid, she served as a lawyer for Pfizer and Gilead. So these are the people who are supposed to be deciding on vaccine policy, and do you really think they're going to decide against their 401ks and their next jobs? The drug companies are carrying these people in their pocket, like so many nickels and dimes. Now, if you're a drug dealer, the next thing you need is territory. You need to control your block, you need to control your corner. So this is what these drug companies have done extraordinarily well during this pandemic. Since they've got the government, US government effectively bought off, the US government takes decisions which are quite contrary to its own national interest and of course to the human interest in so much as American gives a fuck about that. But they take decisions contrary to their own interest in order to preserve drug companies' patents, essentially their territory. So if you just look at the agreement the U.S. has with the, with the doses it bought, it's not allowed to, if it, even if it has excess, it's not allowed to send them anywhere else. It has to just like let them rot. Uh, Vandy Fair covered that. That's just like this sh shitty, humiliating contract they've signed. And you could say, oh, Trump did that. But then Biden should really be able to renegotiate this. Like if you look at this from the outside, the U.S. government should have all the power. Because this is really like a mafia bust out, right? So if you remember that scene in Goodfellas where they bust out the restaurant, right? So the mafia comes in as a partner to this restaurant, but all they really do is they run up huge bills on the restaurants, the legit guy's credit, then they sell that shit right out the back door for pennies on the dollar. So that's really what the drug companies have done with you know, the US scientific like, inst institutions. For this coronavirus vaccine, it's been a long time coming. So there's been public research into coronaviruses for decades. There's been research into this particular spike protein for decades. So that's all publicly funded research, billions and billions, frankly priceless amounts of work that goes into it. 
And then there's the very fact that these vaccines themselves are publicly funded. So like the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines are majority public funded. So you get this weird situation, right? It's like a bust out. So the public pays for everything. It's on the American people's good faith and credit. And yet it's sold out the back door by these private drug companies who seem to have the US government, which has an army and a navy, they seem to have it over a barrel. It doesn't make sense if you understand in terms of geopolitics, but in terms of mafianomics, it makes perfect sense. The place is mobbed up. And it's, of course, it's not just the drug companies, right? The oil mafia, like any motherfucker with money, right? The US is just an oligarchy. It's corrupted to the bone. Like Reagan started gutting the corpse in the 80s, and now it's pretty gutted. <laughs> so now you got the political cover, you got the cops in your pocket, you got the territory. Next thing you need is junkies. So there's this frankly chilling sort of, I think it's like an earnings call or something, with the Pfizer CFO. I'll play a bit here. So we don't see this as a one-time event, but we see this as something that's going to continue for the foreseeable future. What we believe, what I believe is, is we move from a pandemic state, from a pandemic situation to an endemic situation. But we think as this shifts from pandemic to endemic, we think there's an opportunity here for us. So he's talking about the pandemic becoming endemic. So in Sri Lanka, I know this in terms of we have endemic birds. These are birds who have been here for, you know, hundreds of thousands of years. So like, that's what they're talking about the pandemic in terms of. And of course, it's good business for them, right? They're like, oh, you need like an update. Like here, we'll get you on the Netflix plan for vaccines, spinning out this mRNA shit, which we have a monopoly on. Oh, the US government owns a vital patent for it. Oh, they could have distributed across the world starting for just $500 million. But no, the US government just enforced territory and patents for these private companies for essentially the mob that's taken them over. And therefore we get made into fucking junkies, right? Like they just have a constant product that they're able to sell to a captive audience because they bought off the cops and they control the block. So now you got the power, you got the territory, you got the junkies. Next thing is to make a killing. And of course that's what they're doing. Instead of Look, what we really should have done this pandemic is what people normally do in the face. So look, if you look at, say, like in the 1800s, when England and Germany, or sorry, England and France were fighting each other, they still sort of exchanged vaccines. And then if you look at more recently, like during the Cold War, at the height of the Cold War, the United States still helped vaccinate people for smallpox in the USSR. Like there is generally this human sense that, hey, like, you know, against a virus, right? Against a shared enemy, we like stick together and we help to each other, help each other. But America's abandoned all that, obviously. Like all they really care about is their stock market. And you know, the people who are supposed to care, who are supposed to represent the people, they're also thinking about their stock portfolios. And the killing is literal as well. So because the US and a bunch of fucking douchebag colonial countries, plus Brazil and Japan, uh, because they blocked patent-free vaccines at the WTO many months ago. And I'll just add, this is the minimum, right? Everyone's, it's not just like the TRIPS waiver is not gonna make everything fucking great. Like there actually needs to be actual cooperation. This is the minimum. So it's not like just this one thing. America actually has to approach this in the spirit of human cooperation, which they're not doing. But anyway, since these guys blocked that basic measure, we've been unable to ramp up vaccine production. And since they're holding onto mRNA technology so tightly, then we're on it. So that's actually cheaper, faster, and better technology. As Tom Frieden said, for about $500 million, you could set up four production uh, factories all over the world. And then we could be spinning up things very quickly and very efficiently um, to fight this and future pandemics. And that's all within the US's power. As he goes through in that political article, which you should read, it's like all within their power. They're just choosing not to do it. Why? I don't know, like why does a restaurant buy a bunch of cases of booze and sell it out of a trunk of a car? Because they're mobbed up. Like it doesn't make sense for the restaurant, it doesn't make sense for the fucking diners, it doesn't make sense for any human being, but it makes sense for the, for the mafia. Now what's happened as a result is that you have to think about the delay, right? You remember at the beginning of the pandemic, places that didn't lock down or whatever for a week, their debts increased by hundreds of thousands. So the cost of not expanding vaccination like four or five months ago is like basically millions of deaths now. Like there'll be millions of infections, millions of deaths. And you can see it happening in India. Now India has its own like shitty government, but India was still at least behaving like human beings, right? They were doing what the WHO recommended, which is not just vaccine nationalism, but they were trying to vaccinate other people. They were the main supplier of COVAX. And now that's shut down because they're getting hammered so badly. And you know, the question is why was the world depending on India? 
And it's only been, it's been places like India, China, Russia, and then places like the US talk about vaccine diplomacy because they, like, they actually like can't understand doing the right thing. Like everything has to have some nefarious motive. They're so deeply corrupted that they just can't even understand being a human being. And so now this drug mafia is making a killing. They've lobotomized the largest, most powerful government in the world, and of course the e EU and the UK. And these guys are enforcing territory for them. And all they gotta do is pay off the ruling elites, pay off the bureaucrats. So like, you know, one administrator goes out, they go straight into the boardroom at some drug company, they go straight into some consulting, they get some shares, they come right back in the government, like Republican, Democrat, it just all keeps flipping. The only thing constant is American oligarchy. The only thing constant is American corruption. And right now the damn constant thing in my part of the world is people dying. And it's getting people killed. And of course I can go into how it hurts Americans, but you know, you shouldn't be thinking like that. We're facing a virus and you should be thinking like human beings. So I hope that's broken it down for you. I write about this sort of ideas a bit uh, on indie.ca and there's a newsletter there that you can sign up for. And I'd just like you to think about the mafianomics of the thing. If you think about it in terms of geopolitics, it's crazy. Like everybody fucking hates America right now. Like we hate you. If you think of it in terms of economics, it's fucking crazy. Like we're talking about just, it's a connected economy. We're talking about just trillions of like dollars of loss. And if you think about it as a human being, it's, it's a fucking crime against humanity because people are dying. Like people with families, people with loved ones, they're dying and they're getting sick and they're gonna deal with this thing for years for the rest of their lives. And it doesn't make sense in any of those contexts, but it makes sense in terms of mafianomics. In terms of mafianomics, it's quite simple. You put the cops in your pocket, you take the territory, you round up the junkies, and you make a killing.